actually formally begin with our session. So today we'll be talking about AI at FCCU. So FCC has been one of the first universities in Pakistan to actually embrace this movement and actually work for uh, a for the development of AI, especially when it comes to faculty development. So for our today's session, uh, the agenda is that we're going to talk about challenges of normalizing AI. Uh, we are going to talk about the support structure available for the faculty and students at FCCU and explore strategies that work for us in our context. Uh, just a disclaimer, uh, Dr. Mevish will also be talking about this forward. Uh, we are still developing policies. AI is still very new and all universities around the globe, including FC, is still developing uh, guidelines and policies on how to navigate this. So we'll be sharing some of the practices, uh, international practices, some of the things that CLT has developed. And we would also love to hear from you in today's session so we can come together as a whole and discuss what's best moving forward. Another thing is that uh, since AI is, has multiple uses and case scenarios, it is going to vary department wise. So the resources we are going to share are just general guidelines that you can uh, contextualize based on your department, based on things that you need to. So for the first activity, uh, if you could please log on to www.menti.com uh, and please put in this access code when you log in. And for the participants who have joined us online, I have posted the link to join the. And for the participants, the link to join the. And we look for this, this access code, and we just want you to, uh, to post your challenges. Now, the reason we are doing this is that um, I understand this is, uh, you know, time and again, CLT asks you, what are your challenges? We again and again ask you the same question because our understanding is that as you guys will get mature in your teaching with AI, your challenges are also going to change, you know, uh, and the challenges would tell, they tell us that at what level of expertise or practice you all are when it comes to using AI. So just post uh, any, you know, any challenges that you, you're you facing when it comes to teaching with uh, AI. So thank you so much for posting your um, challenges here. We all can see the challenges. They are so as uh, more people, more participants are posting in their challenges. I'll take you back to uh, our presentation, and we'll start talking about about the about the issues hmm. all right most of our uh, challenges are rooted either in the detection detection issues or we are concerned with the absence of institutional guidelines. CLT is working towards developing the institutional guidelines, but for now we don't have any set guidelines that we can offer uh, to the faculty that this is the umbrella uh, guidance provided for the uh, faculty of uh, Foreman Christian College University. Then uh, many of you are also concerned with the st students over reliance on uh, AI. Is my 
my slides are not visible here. Oh. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So our challenges, I was talking about the challenges. I've I've taken um Considering your challenges, these are the emerging themes in which most of your challenges um, may fall. That, you know, you're concerned with the students' over-reliance on AI and you're concerned with the resulting uh, compromised critical thinking and issues with, assess uh, with asserting ethical or unethical use of AI. So these are all, you know, gray areas. These are uncharted waters for us. We really don't know um, a definite way forward. But having said that, uh, I'm going to today take you through different uh, different uh, frameworks and the briefs that CLT has compiled over a period of time. And this mandates us to basically come together as a team and find our way forward. Because we all are representing different faculties. We The, the requirement of our degree programs is different. The program learning outcomes are different. So one a uh, stick cannot be, you know, given out or one yardstick cannot be used to uh, measure the impact of AI in every discipline and every faculty, which, which is why we have gathered here to talk about what are the possibilities, what is the support structure available to us, and how can we benefit from it. So um, the first thing is that as teachers, we need to have, of course, a course template for uh, AI policy. I'm going to take you through uh, this. Um, just give me a minute. Oh, no, no, no. The entire screen, OK. So you can see. Here you can see that uh, I will just see it. Okay, but I'm not able to see it on my computer. All right, this is the AI course policy template, which is available. It's available to all of you. This is very generic. We have talked about uh, basic issues, very valid issues when it comes to uh, teachers planning the course policy for their students. So you have to think about what sort of AI best suits your learning outcomes, what will be most beneficial for you. There is a little description of different types of um, AI available for us. What, how should you determine the acceptable use of AI? There are some uh, thought-provoking questions written here. It will help all of you to uh, to decide for your own self what suits best uh, your context and your needs. It talks about data privacy and policy and how should you uh, enforce the AI policy. Of course, there has to be a consistent approach towards uh, enforcing this policy. So this brief is available. Moving on, it's available on uh, uh, CLT's webpage. Then we have a AI guidebook. I'm going to, you know, one by one, take you through all of these resources. This AI guidebook is also available to the entire faculty. It talks about very basics of AI. What is AI? Why should you care about generative AI? How to use it? What uh, can be the possibilities and what are the implications of using AI? So there are uh, segments within this brief. Go through this. This is heavily hyperlinked with best practices that, that are available online. And um, you can use all of this, you know, this content can actually help you navigate your way uh, when it comes to um, finalizing an AI policy. So all moving on, materials yeah. Materials will be reshared with you after the session. Absolutely. We will reshare these materials. But uh, as we progressed uh, through developing these materials, these were uh, always shared with the faculty. And the reason why we are holding this session is because we wanted to refresh your understanding that this support structure is already there. 
all you have to do is to just go through it uh, and uh, think about your own course policies. Think about how do you want to provide these guidelines to the students. This is a very interesting um, book, the AI playbook that uh, CLT has developed. It's very engaging. Its interface is very uh, easy to understand. It grasps the attention. You can actually use this uh, with the students as well. And somebody just before we started the session, um, we were having a conversation here in this room where uh, you all thought that, you know, uh, you want to know more about the AI as a teaching tool. So this in, uh, has a lot of information in it that uh, how can you use AI as a as an active teaching resource. So there are AI tools. Some of these are free. Uh, there is a collection of institutional policies. There are frameworks hyperlinked in this uh, playbook. This playbook was given out to all the faculty members during the faculty retreat in a hard copy. The soft copy is available on the web page, and we strongly encourage you all to refer to this playbook and use it as actively as possible. So this takes you uh, through all the stages as a teacher that you you will go through, like before the semester, how should you prepare when you're teaching with AI? During the semester, how should you communicate the expectations to your students? And how should you address any concerns? And to address the concerns, it's really important for us to be able to identify the concerns first. And we can only identify the concerns when we have set some kind of expectations, which really requires all the faculty to think about the guidelines that you want to um, to communicate with your students. What are your expectations? The guy when we say guidelines, we just mean to say that what are your own ideas of what is acceptable in your courses? You have to really you have to think about it because you cannot stop the students. There are really no tools available out there that can tell you that this percent of the work is created by uh, or generated by the help of AI tools. You students, what they do, and I'm going to take you through some samples as well. Um, so what they do, they use one AI tool to generate the basic idea. They take that idea to another tool to build on that idea. Then they take that the, that entire write-up to a third tool and they want to they change the language. So no tool available uh, in the market right now can actually help the faculty determine that 50% of this product is produced by AI. And students are very clever. They know their way around it. And also, you see, this is the reality. And very interesting fact is that the present version of ChatGPT, Gemini, Copilot are the most redundant forms of the future applications. So this is like Nokia 3310, okay? This is just going to get better and better and more sophisticated. So we definitely don't want to deprive our students from using this technology. We have to accept it. There, is, there are no two ways about it because you cannot really catch the students. All you can do is to just help them understand its correct use, to educate them how to embrace AI as a learning tool, not as a shortcut for teaching. So the more we want to control them, can nahi istamal karna, nahi istamal karna, more we project the idea that this is something uh, related to cheating. Whereas this is not cheating. This is just the new normal. And we have to normalize it. So coming back to the resources, uh, this playbook very interestingly talks about how should you reflect on your practices and how should you find the way forward to improve and improvise on your uh, practices. Redesigning, it covers the entire full circle from planning to redesigning while passing through the basic steps of reflection. So uh, moving on, uh, we have the CLT brief. I have showed you the directory of AI tools. That's also very interesting. This is the directory of uh, AI tools as well as the rubrics. So I'm going to move forward the tools evaluation rubric. So 
this is the tool evaluation rubric where you depending on the learning outcomes that you are teaching and you are the best judge of your learning outcomes because you are the ones who have developed those learning outcomes right so uh, by looking at uh, this rubric together with your students i strongly encourage that you should take students on board analyze the um, impact of different ai tools some all ai tools are not really impressive you know some ai tools are not impressive at all they have their own limitations so help the students identify that which tools are be are best suitable for the things that we are expected to do or accomplish during this course everything uh, available out there in the name of ai is not quality so you need to evaluate the tools and this is a little rubric that can help you uh, determine your own evaluation mechanism mm -hmm. yeah yeah you can of course students right now cannot access these resources but as teachers because you have access to these resources and if later on you want to share something with your students you can definitely do that uh we we will encourage that but we have some specific um resources available for students as well which uh, can be made available to them i'm going to take you through those resources as well now in order to communicate with the ai effectively uh, prompting is the key right so prompting is has become the core competence the foundational competence that everybody be it the users be them uh, the faculty members or the students but the users basically need to have uh, understanding that how to command the ai tool to generate what you are expecting it to generate and as i will show you some samples of students work that i have collected from my own courses you will understand that prompting is actually a way of communicating with the ai if you're talking to the ai by talk, uh, by saying just you know very uh, rudimentary upfront straight two word uh, command it will give you a very abrupt answer just like your input the output will be dependent on the of course the clarity that your input has or the coherence that your input has and the entire context that you are giving in the uh, to the mm, to whatever ai tool you are using moving on as i mentioned earlier that we have some students uh, specific to uh, sorry student specific uh, resources as well at uh, clt this is a um, uh, effective prompt writing re resource available for the faculty you should use these uh, this um brief with your students because it talks about the principles it talks about the uh, practice bit and what sort of tasks should you um can you build on by using certain principles of prompting so this is a two, uh, the first brief which is for both faculty as well as students and then for students specifically we have the guidelines which this is the first version it just came out in the, the september 2024 like this month we presented it to the vr's office we pilot tested this with the university 100 students and um, this is a draft in making so this document is of course not the final version but can provide some basic guidelines to the students about how to use ai how should it work how should it be looked at um, as a teaching resource so this is a very uh, brief uh, set of guidelines available you can use these guidelines uh, moving on we have a practice book now the guidelines are not complete without the practice book we call it a spell book because we feel that uh, and you all would agree that ai is like magic okay it gives that power to every student to perform to learn according to their own learning style so this spell book is in place for students to practice uh, the use of ai and this is also the first draft right so it has five components to it uh, the first one talks about uh, different tools which are available and how to choose the tools based on the output required 
Then you have a practice se uh, section for writing prompts, meta prompting, using an AI tool to write prompts for you for another AI tool, right? Or for the same tool, maybe. So meta prompting is discussed in this um, cell book. Then we have uh, uh, short activities where we want students to uh, match the quality or compare the quality of work that is produced by different types of prompts so that they understand that how uh, better prompting can gain uh, more quality in their work. Um, so I've shown you the practice book. Lastly, I want to tell you all that Common Christian College is not the only university that's struggling with uh, developing concrete policies on using AI. There are many other universities out there, especially uh, international universities, which are struggling to develop policies here on this Padlet. This is a beautiful collection of different policies, guidelines, uh, way forward defined by the leading universities in America. And all these policies are uh, placed on this Padlet because this is an open resource. They encourage people from other parts of the world to uh, look at the policies, to critique on these policies. You can add comments. If you have any observation, you can write to the uh, university. And also take help from these uh, guidelines. You see, these are all the universities over here. They have different contexts. Some of them are large public universities. Some of these are private, small colleges uh, in the most remote areas of uh, the, the US. So basically, you can take help from these, uh, from these guidelines. Pick and choose. See what works well for you. And with this, uh, this was the third objective of today's uh, gathering that we want to see that what works best for us in our own context. We all share the mutual context because the overall academic integrity policy and the overall uh, expectations of the university apply to everybody, irrespective of the discipline that we are teaching in. So I'm going to start with uh, showing you some samples from my courses, and then I have Dr. Saima, who uh, volunteered to present her guide, uh, course guidelines. And I hope that by seeing these two samples, you would get some understanding that, you know, by taking small steps, uh, we really mean uh, and we expect from you to think about what is acceptable in your courses and how do you want to take your courses from this day onward. So, um, I'll show you, first of all, I will show you my course outline where I have defined the policy on the use of generative AI. There are three levels of use, uh, not allowed, limited use, and AI integration allowed. How does it translate into action? You have to tell this to students. This is my understanding that we really have to, you know, sketch a clear picture for the students so that there is no ambiguity left. So it uh, not allowed means that they are just not allowed to use any form of AI. Limited use means that they can uh, allow, they can use AI powered tools for different segments. And I will tell them which segment do they have to use the AI tool. Uh, and then how do they define or how do they declare that they have used AI? Uh, they are required to submit AI generated information as a supplementary file. I will show you the file in a while. Uh, and they must add citation for AI's contribution. So these are some guidelines that I have provided where in task where I let them use AI or the tasks that can be fully integrated with AI. Within those assignments, they have to mandatorily add a section of methodology in which they need to tell me that which tools did they use and how did they use the information that was produced by AI. So this part comes in the methodology section and which becomes essential um, 
irrespective if I announce it again in the class or not, but the tasks that uh, allow them to use uh, AI, they have to add the section of methodology. Uh, citation format may have told them that there has to be an in-text identification. They have to color code all the information that is generated by AI. Then they also have to provide an in-text citation. And they have to add in footnotes the prompts that they gave to AI and the information that was produced. Now I'll show you, now this, this, this is, uh, these are the, I mean, this is my course outline. I'm going to now show you a recent assignment that I gave out to my students. So we were studying uh, peace treaties and this course is uh, peace education. I wanted them to understand the context of assigned peace treaty. These are the uh, peace treaties that we intended to study. And then the task was that they had to write a reflective essay summarizing their findings and insights. And they, want, they had to answer these three, four questions. And then there is an assessment criteria where I have, uh, uh, I have a rubric for indication of use of chat GPT. And I allowed them to use chat GPT. And then the second aspect of the rubric is that how well have they reflected and uh, added their own personal insight. So I'm just going to uh, take you through the student's work. This is the entire conversation that the student had with chat GPT. This is, uh, this is stretched over 20 pages. Okay, this is the entire conversation that the student had in which he's, uh, look at the prompt. What are the specific provisions in terms outline in good Friday agreement? Sure. Okay, so please pay, pay a little attention on the uh, quality of his prompt. What is the what is historical background key players and negotiations of Good Friday Agreement? As a teacher, now uh, when I am assessing his work, I'm going back to the instructions. He's copying and pasting everything from this file to ChatGPT. So without providing any context, without actually uh, talking about what was Good Friday Agreement in first place. So for me, if I'm a teacher and if I have to, uh, asked the students to do uh, to do this research using Chat GPT, I expect them to follow some kind of protocols. And we had talked about these protocols in the class. So as a teacher, now I I am the best judge of understanding how well the prompting is being um, carried out. And now the uh, entire content that is generated by chat GPT, let me take you to his assignment now. The work product that was finally submitted to me. So it was supposed to be an essay. The format is not of an uh, essay. You can clearly see it here and the prompts are not added in the footnotes. There is no uh, in-text citation, although he has uh, kind of color coded and you can see the extent of information that has been uh, copied uh, straight up by the conversation that he has had with uh, chat GPT. And the answers are written also in a very straightforward um, and in the end, the disclaimer says that all my research credit goes to ChatGPT from which I have taken the outline and idea about Good Friday. But obviously, I written my understanding, thoughts, and idea about this treaty. So when I'm the teacher and I'm assessing it, I know how much material is coming from ChatGPT. So this is my way of handling, of tracking down uh, what percentage of material is being borrowed from uh, generative AI. No, I'm using uh, my eyes only 
and I'm reading 20 pages of produced by ChatGPT, and then I'm comparing that text with the assignment that, sub uh, that was submitted by the student. Very well, actually very well, because I think I was never able to uh, assess any student's uh, academic credibility so clearly uh, as I was able to do for this assignment. Because it tells me about the critical thinking that students are putting in while writing the prompt. It gives me an idea of their general understanding of using AI as a writing tool or as a learning tool. And just tells me that how they must have done the research by uh, using Google. Now, Google is also artificial intelligence, and we really don't stop students from using Google or um, or Google Scholars and all of that. But it tells us that their ability to use these platforms required some sort of training. We need to train the students in, uh, you know, in um, to to get enough competencies to use these digital platforms. Uh, smartly. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely, and believe me that you will find the uh, find it for yourself after you have read the entire conversation with Chat GPT, and when you open up the assignment submitted by the student, it will take you only ten minutes to understand that um, how is this uh, working? If everything is yeah, absolutely, and um. Yeah, it tells you a lot uh, about the students' capabilities and their potential. And we as teachers have to help them improve their academic performance. Now, there is a downside to it, which I want to share with all of you as a faculty member. This is not an easy task. It took me about 45 minutes to mark one piece of, uh, you know, submission. And if I have 35 students in my class, then that you can calculate how much amount of time I'm spending on just marking. So this takes us back to the fact that faculty need some sort of support in uh, when we are talking about normalizing AI, we of course, we require faculty to spend uh, X number of hours in uh, addressing these issues, which are real life issues, and we can't really brush these issues under the carpet. So at CLT, we are in conversation with the uh, leadership of uh, uh, Common Christian College University to think about some possibilities where how can we support the teachers. Right now, I don't have anything uh, tangible to share with you, but soon we will be coming up with some sort of provision for the faculty to facilitate them in this, this kind of uh, workload. Well, right now we don't have any policy. Question? Which question? Oh, okay. So um, I have a question that uh, asks me. <laughs> I've totally gone blank. Yeah, sorry. Do not love. Yeah. Right now, we don't have any policy under which I should be able to tell you that this is allowed and this is not allowed. But as a teacher, I feel that uh, AI is not a replacement for my human intellect. Only I can tell as a teacher, what did I teach in my class? What did I ask my students to accomplish? What was the process that I took them through? And what were my expectations? And what have they done? So if I... Uh, 
insert the student submission into an AI and ask them to uh, assess the content. I can only give very straightforward uh, expectations, right? So, but between the lines, the intellectual part needs a human eye. And uh, this is my own understanding as a teacher. Um, it is good for yeah. And, and yeah. Absolutely. It's not blindly used. So this was our, uh, we have another question from Naomi. How can we differentiate them? So for example, I'm teaching one course, linguistic studies, the title of phonetics and phonology. And it's a bit of technical course, you have places and manner and sound production agencies. So my way of doing it, for example, if I'm teaching them types of phonetics, aren't we playful acoustic air? I ask them, what, how do you interpret TKT, what is articulatory and what is uh, auditory? And can you think of an example and explain it with the help of an example? Because we talk about a lot of examples in the class. So that's adding that personalized of chat GPT ko pata hum ne kis context mein kis example. Absolutely, yeah. So if they understand the context, they're able to think and then I'm able to figure out ki kitna content kahan se liya, kitna shoot hai. But you know, now students uh, and the users, I wouldn't only say uh, students, Dr. Mavish, but can the you users please repeat of the question? GPT or generative AI, they have become mindful of the fact that there is a certain robotic vocabulary that time and again merges. So there's a lot of research uh, available which in which uh, faculty members uh, do talk about the fact that students rephrase the terminology. But even then, if even if they are rephrasing their terminology, after reading their submission, it's just the teachers who can tell that how well have they grasped the idea. Yeah, the context is missing, absolutely. Yeah, and I have that uh, example as a, I have the supplementary uh, conversation file with the generative AI tool for this uh, assignment from the entire class. And by going through their prompts, I clearly understand that they require training on prompt engineering. They are struggling with uh, prompting. So this is also a new need for, um, for, of course, academic development. Very quickly, before we move on to Dr. Simon's presentation, I uh, the last thing that I want to show you is a very interesting uh, resource. God, how do I just give me a minute, please? There are so many things actually open on my. Uh, yeah, it's here. It is. So this is a um a list of competencies that has just been offered by. UNESCO, um, what happened? Okay. So, yeah, so the, this is an AI competency framework that UNESCO has launched. And this happened only a few weeks ago. I strongly encourage all of you to go through this. This is a free a resource. It's available online. Yeah. So this talks about different levels of uh, proficiency. It talks about the core competencies that universities need to have in order to prepare um teachers as well as students for ai proficiency right now i think because i cannot fully see my um screen so i have opened up the competency framework for teachers it's good for you guys to go through this resource for teachers as well as for students these resources are are available and uh, we strongly encourage the faculty to go through these as well now i'm going to um request dr saima majid to please share her good practices with us, G. Dr. 
just a second. Um, you'd have to wear these. Thank you very much. So I'm Dr. Simon B from Psychology Department. Here I want to share some of the policies of use of special Janai AI and which I have uh, designed for this fall uh, 2024. Because after doing my research and um, with teachers, that is a qualitative research with students set up a qualitative research and then I also launched a survey and then I come up with some policies which I, I think that especially in my course as psychology and particularly with research methodology, it is important to discuss it with my students because I believe upon a very clear policies so that we, we as teachers and students as like our other um, counterparts should not be in confusion, whether it is cheating, whether it is like I'm doing something wrong because initially I as a teacher think about it is something wrong when I make my first login in uh, chat GPT and I was doing and playing and one of my colleagues just entered in the uh, uh, in my office and I just shut my uh, like my laptop and feel that what what was really I was doing wrong and then I I reflect on me and then I studied so many things and then I say no it is not wrong but I take it differently and then I, I become more open for it. So these are the some policies which I approve some of the AI tools based upon again some research and especially with purpose uh, uh, related to our courses in psychology. So these are approved for my students in my courses because of many things for while um, we some of are already using uh, like Grammarly, it's not seems to be as um, a kind of cheating as uh, we thought about chat GPT. So why why chat GPT? Why not Grammarly? So these are the um, reference sites so students can go and can download and can just explore them. These are mostly these are free. mostly. So it's upgraded or premier packages are on uh, not free, but it initial packages are all free. So here the some permitted use of AI in my courses, that is initial topic searching. So students can use an AI tool to search, understand initial course for topics. This allows for an efficient way to gather broad information. Then brainstorming, of course. So you have uh, not, uh, if you are, have no other student or teacher, so you can use Gen AI for brainstorming, create practice quizzes. This is wonderful idea because uh, before chat GPT, I always make some practice quizzes to my students and upload on Moodle. So now I give this task to the student themselves to create their own practice quizzes, practice it, and then come up with the actual quiz. Even they can understand that how, why MCQs are like their um, um, choices are so similar in our courses and it is not in, in chat GPT. So they can differentiate it like double, which is the double parallel question or which should be, how should uh, a quiz should be created. So they can practice it before coming into actual exams and assignments. Developing case examples, because for example, I'm teaching abnormal psychology, it's very important to study through cases. So they can develop their own case examples, like from bipolar, from schizophrenia, and then they come up with what type of assessment tool that is required, diagnosis, and short-term or long-term goal for a patient. So they can create their own cases and then coming up with the answers of those. Proofreading, of course, this is important to use Gamali and other AI tools for proofreading, vocabulary improvement, but definitely student must ensure that the final edit and overall content remain their own. And these are some prohibited use of AI in my courses, like writing the whole research proposal, of course, uh, midterm and final term assignments, and classroom activities. Those classroom activities which I designed, the student must use their own brain, their own creative skill, analytical abilities, and especially the teamwork. So they, they are not allowed to even to use their phone. Uh, creative problem solving. Even though we are saying that it is AI is a threat towards cre student creativity, but to some extent we can make it more creative in a sense. AI tools cannot be used to solve complex or creative problems since the focus is on nurturing the student problem solving skills. So, okay. So this is an additional thing that I introduce for disclosure, for statement, for declaration statement at the end of every submitted assignment. Transparency is essential. I believe students are required to explicitly disclose where and how Gen AI tools were used in any submitted work. And this ensures academic honesty and fair, fairness. Disclosure ensures that educational process remains focused on developing original student thought. It allows instructor to assess what part of the work was assisted by AI and what was done independently by the student, as Dr. Mavish also told you about that. 
so this is uh, my general disclosure sample which i given to my students i or my team so they have to written their own name use which generative ai tool they have used to help identify relevant resources all information has been independently verified by me or my team they have to mention their own name their the tool they has been used for accuracy and appropriateness and this is one sample these are two to three samples which i taken from my assignment so i uh, student name used chat gpt to assist with research in this assignment i reviewed validated and edited all ai generated content included in the submitted work so writing support then again the student name the assignment the use uh, that grammarly for grammatical correction sentence structure and vocabulary suggestions so all final added content argument and following word are my own work so uh, this also give an idea to at the part of student that they are now they are owning to their own work as well so they are also giving credit to someone else if that they have used it so i student name used chat uh, pdf and chat gpt both you you definitely aware of that attachment that is a provision in chat gpt to enhance my understanding of coding taught in class i independently applied the learning information and completed the assignment then brainstorming then they also use a kind of brainstorming thing so this is all um, uh, practices which i am doing in my class for this fall onwards So thank you so much. Uh, now I want um, I have another question from all of you. I want to all to please go back to uh, Mentimeter. Uh, not the uh, you can in the meanwhile also of course give feedback on the quality of this session. But I want you all to please go back to um, Mentimeter because there is a new slide that we want to take you through. It's the same code, please. Yeah. That's uh... All right, we have a comment here in the room where uh, Naomi Justin says that she is using the policy that has been issued by HEC. The reason why we are asking you, am I unmuted? Okay, the reason why I'm asking you this question again, we asked this question during the summer break as well. And uh, when we asked this question during the summer break, we came across the fact that only 30% of the respondents uh, were uh, trying to build a guideline, set of guidelines of their course-based AI use policy. Now, as we have just talked about the uh, critical issues in using AI, the first st stage is to develop the policy. Right now, as well, if you can see the um, at the statistics, this is a this is the truth. This is our context. That most of us do not have any defined protocols for using AI, and that is why it's uh, consequently there are challenges associated with it because we cannot um, identify if the student is unethically using AI or ethically using AI. So first of all, we have to define that what are the what is the definition of ethical use of AI for us in our course. So please. Uh, Well, this is not 
not a training. This is just a conversation. Because you see, training on season two years, which which have a very straightforward approach. That this is what you are required to do. I am just helping you and uncover your own thoughts to identify what are the core aspects which you need to consider before you put in place some set of uh, guidelines for your students. We have another question. Uh, members. 
for that it is very uh, important that you all think about what is the ethical use of ai in your courses and what is the unethical use of ai uh, we have a question online Yeah, that's the benefit of adding context to your prompt. If you're asking the uh, generative tool to create a, let's say, an activity for students, a student-centered activity, you must tell them what age group of students are you talking about. We have a question here uh, amongst the audience, uh, Dr. Hassan Shah, if you could please unmute yourself. Dr. Hassan has a question. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me, please? Okay, I, I have a comment. I, first of all, I'd like to thank you for this, uh, uh, you know, your talk and the ethical use of AI and the guidelines for the teachers. And I just think that uh, we, instead of uh, getting them to do their assignments only, and we can follow all the guidelines that you have given, we should, I think, find time somehow to arrange for small vivas around their assignments to see what they have understood. Because eventually, I think more than grammar or um, writing a good piece, it is essential to see what is the level of understanding. So I think uh, whereas maybe tools will come up to check sometimes later that how much has been done via AI, et cetera, but at the moment they are not available. So my suggestion is, and which I plan to start doing from uh, this semester, is to spend time on their assignments by keeping the assignment on the side, but asking them questions uh, on understanding. And I, I think that would, probably be a useful way of trying to do things because if we spend a lot of time uh, checking our uh, assignments, I think the same amount of time can be spent on testing their uh, understanding. Thank you. Thank you, sir. This is the future of assessment and uh, I want to quickly share uh, an experience. Uh, recently, somebody approached me for um, assessing their um, application for uh, a scholarship. And to my surprise, the entire application was in a digital form. So this is the future of assessment. People are shifting massively from uh, writing-based assessment to verbal assessments, VIVAs, video-based assessments. Um, and that's what we should also uh, embrace, of course, because this is how actually one can ass assess that what is the uh, final learning that the student um, has acquired in terms of, uh, you know, learning the tool learning outcomes that you took to the class. So with this, we strongly encourage you to please post comments on the Padlet that we have created. Uh, sorry, the uh, Mentimeter link that we shared with you. We have uh, the last slide for your reference in which we uh, welcome your questions and your comments on course AI guidelines. That uh, the brief that CLT has. We are going to share the uh, all the briefs, the links to the AI playbook with you. We strongly encourage you to please go through it and post your comments on this Mentimeter so that we can make these briefs um, current and of course helpful for the faculty. If there is anything at all in the brief that you feel uh, shouldn't be there or you think that it has a um, you know, it has evolved with the passage of time. Please let us know. We'll be uh, happy to bring changes. And also, 
um we strongly encourage you to develop the course based ai guidelines because that is the first step for all of us to start from and thank you so much for joining us um thanks a lot